אז היי לכולם, אני בתוכנית הרעיונות שלי, מראיינת היום את דוקטור פרודנס הול, מהוליווד, מקליפורניה. <laughs> פרודנס יספר לנו על עצמה, אנחנו נדבר על הורמונים ועל הרבה דברים נחמדים. היי פרודנס, אני מאוד 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 I'm really uh, excited because this subject is uh, very important, important for me, important for lots of uh, women in Israel and around the world. And um, first, before we start, I, uh, I would like if you can uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Ah, okay. So I trained at the big county hospital in Los Angeles. Uh, it's connected to the University of Southern California where I got my medical degree from and I then went into the, my gynecology residency at that big hospital taking care of very poor women and very needy women and I was a busy surgeon I was uh, doing regular gynecology I delivered thousands of babies there mm. and then when I went into private practice I thought that I knew that The field of gynecology and obstetrics until I started working with menopausal women and what I was taught at USC is measure one hormone level on them it's called the follicle stimulating hormone if it's elevated which means they're in menopause give them primarin which was the or still is the pregnant horse's urine and see them in a year and So that's what I did with the women that I, I had in a very beautiful private practice. They came back in a year in tears. They were saying, "What have you done? Nothing is, is working. You know my sex drive is terrible. I've gained another 10 pounds. I, I'm crying all the time. I'm not myself, Prudence. Please, please, please help." So I went on a journey. I was going back and forth to France and Europe at the time, and in Europe, They were just starting to use bioidentical hormones. I bought them back from Europe. I started using them with my patients, and we'll go into bioidentical hormones later. And there were real miracles that happened. So my patients were my teacher, and, and I had to bring from another culture the solution, because really, in the United States, there was no other solution than what I'd been taught in a very, very good residency. So this has been my life. Because how you handle menopause defines the whole rest of your life. You know, 40 years or 50 years, we don't go into menopause and then get well. Oh yeah, menopause is done. It stays with us. So that's why I'm very grateful to be here speaking with you because I know you wrote such a beautiful book and you are very, very uh, aware of hormones. Mm-hmm. And can you, can you tell us about uh, what does it feel like when uh, we are out of hormones? <laughs> well, I've only dealt with about 50,000 women now, so I can tell you what happens. So around the age of 37 or 38, we start to feel a slight decrease in our hormones. Some women come to me at that point crying and saying they feel badly, and I'll describe what badly feels. Other women don't start to feel it until their early 40s. So the symptoms are classic. First of all, we feel... A little more down a little more depressed mm-hmm. more anxious we sometimes feel more irritable and kind of angry and and uh, we have more PMS because most of the time women are having their periods regularly or sometimes irregularly um, the brain is a little foggy um, the body hurts more we see aging skin we see aging hair and um, The vagina starts to hurt. There's more dryness in the vagina. Sleep is interrupted. And women are awake at 2 a.m. They can't go back to sleep. They're awake at 4 a.m. They're exhausted. And some women have hot flashes. You know, so they're sweating a lot. They're in the board meeting. They're trying to direct all these teams and be, you know, competent in their life. And they're pouring down sweat. They'll sweat. Then it's okay. Then they'll sweat. So those are the primary symptoms. A few unusual symptoms in low sex drive. Women tell me what sex drive? Zip, zero, none. So that's very common. And um, another kind of uncommon one is one that I experienced in early menopause, and it was being a little obsessive about things. Oh. This cup must be here. You know? And then I, I felt good. Or door handles were a little dirty. So, you know, or charts were dirty. So I would be holding a chart 
And I'd say, ah, oh, you know, I'd better wash my hands. That completely went away with hormone therapy, as do all symptoms. And losing the 30 pounds of weight that we gain in early menopause, that is the average amount of weight, which is really devastating to women. Mm -hmm. The weight. And uh, why, why is it so important to be in hormonal balance? Well, there are two sides of that question. Very good question. It's critical to be in hormonal balance because hormones are your body's software. So we're sitting at the computer, we're you know, typing, there's no software. What happens? Nonsense, gibberish comes out. The same thing happens with our body. When we have hormonal balance, the cells know what to do. The brain can communicate. The heart beats. We're less hungry or more hungry. Our thirst is managed. Our weight is managed. Our sleep is managed. Every single cell in the body is managed by different hormonal systems. So you start losing that. And in menopause, you start losing your ovarian hormones plus a ton of other hormones. But even for the ovarian hormones, estrogen is low, inflammation is high. So it's like that teeter-totter. Estrogen is low, stress is high. Estrogen is low, inflammation is high, sugar is high, cholesterol is high. Now, what happens when you have all of those that are high? What would you say happens? You we become all, sick. What? We become sick. We become sick. Exactly. Those are the core root causes of diseases. So menopause is not just about the symptoms, as you well know. It's about the disease formation that happens in menopause. Number one being heart disease. That's the most common cause of death in women is a heart attack and stroke and then uh, d dementia is very common, and high blood sugar and diabetes and all the arthritis. So we don't only want to balance the hormones for symptom relief, although, you know, of course we eliminate symptoms, but also for disease prevention, because the goal is to be radiant, alive, disease-free, <laughs> our entire lives. And the so bone, that's what? The bone strength. Bone well. strength. Oh, my God. Estradiol is the gold standard for bone strength. Forget Fosamax and these other bone builders. Estradiol, testosterone, those are two ovarian hormones. Progesterone, all three. So strong bones. And that's a significant cause of mortality and morbidity. You know, when women get older, we might think, well, we're old, we're, you know, we're, we're 70. We're, well, you break a hip, it's 70 or 80. You can't always fix it. So we want to correct anything, any hormone that's not youthful, that's not vital. Mm -hmm. Vital hormones, vital life. Now, it also prevents Alzheimer's disease. I think I mentioned that, which is so important as we age. Why not live to 90, 100, 110, and be well? Yeah, yeah. very, very interesting. And uh, Dr. Holt, tell us, what are the factors that throw our system out of hormonal balance. Okay. So the first thing that throws us out of hormonal balance is stress. Stress. And stress can be managed. Uh, there are whole conferences on stress that I attend and talk to, probably like you do. So managing your stress, a lack of sleep really throws your hormones out. Diet, if you eat a lot of sugar, and you don't eat whole living foods as a significant part of your, uh, your diet, then that will throw your hormones off. Toxicity. So I, I, I actually work, you know, quite a bit with women who go into premature ovarian failure. And that means that their hormones stop working at 30 or a very young age like that. And that can be due to toxicity heavy metal toxicity, uh, uh, pesticide toxicity. There might be a genetic component to it, a stress component to it. So these are all important to have really beautiful lifestyles. And of course, chronological aging mm -hmm. can do that too. But really when I work with menopause, it's any place, <laughs> the chronological age is much less important than having a healthy biological age. Oh. This is Birth a, control pills, that also throws our hormones off. That's another whole topic. Oh, God. Okay, so 
in my residency program, I was told that the birth control pill was the most marvelous invention in the world. And as someone who supports women and and really grew up during the women's movement, that's one of the reasons why I became a gynecologist, is that I wanted to help women. And it's very hard to accomplish our dreams when an accidental pregnancy happens. So the idea of controlling our reproduction to some degree, you know, to bring discernment into our reproduction is very important for women. So I love the birth control pill that we could actually control, you know, our, our, our reproduction. I'm one of five diaphragm babies. <laughs> My mother said, oh, yes, the diaphragm failed five times. It's like, yeah, they just loved each other. Forget They forgot the diaphragm. But still, it's a good method. However, when I went into private practice, young women... 17, 18, 19, you know, very young women, started saying, Prudence, I'm tired. I have no sex drive. My mind is foggy. I used to get A's in high school and now in college. I'm, you know, it's very hard to remember things and I'm depressed. So I'm on an antidepressant. I'm on Adderall, which is commonly given for ADHD or attention deficit disorders. Uh, I've gained 20 pounds and I said, oh my God. These young women sound like my menopausal patients. And it took me maybe two or three years in private practice. And I started measuring women on the birth control pill. I've measured thousands of women now. And a very significant amount of women have hormones that look almost like menopausal women. The only thing that's different is the FSH. And that really is about the only way I can tell the difference. Their testosterones are low. Rather than having an estradiol level of 150 to 200, 20. Their, their, their progesterone levels, you don't ovulate on the pill, very low. And all of this, these ovarian problems, throw the adrenals into Mishigash. So the adrenals start to plummet. So then I see adrenal fatigue in these young girls. And then they're craving sugar because their estradiol is low and their adrenal glands are low. So they've gained 30 pounds. So it's just like, please don't take the pill. There's so many good methods now, aside from the pill, that really hurts your radiant hormonal balance. And it'll happen that you'll become in balance, but let's not do it prematurely. And I like the IUD, especially the Paragard IUD. There's foam, there's condoms, there's the rhythm method, there's withdrawal, if you're really experienced with that. And uh, sometimes uh, they prescribe uh, birth control for acne as well. Yes, well, acne is due to sugar, high sugar. In Papua New Guinea, They've done studies on young male, young women's, not one single case of acne <laughs> because they're, they're eating living, healthy food, you know, vegetables and roots, and there's no sugar. So I notice with myself that if I start eating a little bit more dairy or a little bit more sugar, and I really don't eat sugar, I'll, I'll develop acne. And most of the women, the young girls and the women who have acne, when I put them on a healthy diet and, you know, do corrections with, with some of their other hormones, uh, the acne just disappears naturally. Mm -hmm. So it's not appropriate to put young women on the birth control pill for menstrual cramps or for acne <laughs> because it causes so much depression and so many symptoms. Mm -hmm. Um, Dr. Teras, many, many women are afraid of taking uh, hormone replacement therapy uh, mm -hmm. because it might cause cancer or uh, other stuff with uh, tumors, yeah. or sometimes they have the gene for cancer. Yeah. So what, uh, how do you approach uh, this uh, so question? So this is right where medicine is at now. So it is a topic of great interest to many people, and I've studied this extensively, and I've worked with oncologists, that's cancer doctors, getting their opinions and having uh, looking at the literature that they have in their fields. And what I've concluded, really, this is a 30-year, three-decade uh, in-depth study that I've done with hormones, because that's all I do. And what I've concluded is that hormones do not increase breast cancer. 
No one is concerned about other types of hormones. If you go on estrogen alone and you have a uterus, meaning you, you, you have not had a hysterectomy and you do not take progesterone, well, we have known now for 20 years or 30 years that that can increase endometrial cancer. That's uterine cancer. But if you take your estrogen replacement and your progesterone replacement and you do it in the correct manner uh, and you get a uterine ultrasound every you know, few years or if you have abnormal bleeding, then the incidence is lower, very, very low. In all of my years of practice, I've only had a few women who have had a hysterectomy and for that cause, and they're all well and alive. And, and those women had stopped taking progesterone or felt that they were progesterone intolerant. Um, so breast cancer, that's the one thing that people are worried about. When you look at all the combined studies, there might be one extra breast cancer per 50 to 100 women. And most of those studies included the non-bioidentical Primarin, the pregnant horse's urine, and Provera. Now, in 2001, uh, there was a big study that came out. It was the nurses' study with 125,000 women who were on Primarin and Provera. The second leg, they were not taking any hormones. And the third leg of that study, they were taking only Primarin. Now, what they would do to get the Primarin is put catheters, little tubes, into the horse's bladder when they were pregnant, drain the urine, spin it down, process it a bit, and make it into Primarin. So Primarin is prim, is pregnant, mare is horse, in is urine. And what they found in that study is that the group that had Primarin plus Provera had significantly more breast cancer, quite high. And the women who took Primarin alone had decreased breast cancer and the women compared to the women who took nothing. And word rocketed around the world that estrogen was dangerous. So they were not looking at bioidentical estrogen. And many, many times that study was looked at and it was quickly discerned that it was the Provera. Provera is a synthetic, non-bioidentical progesterone that caused the increase in breast cancer. Now, that study has been duplicated again without using Provera, and another 20 years of primer in use was looked at, and there was a significant decrease in breast cancer from those users who used Primarin. The, inc the incidence of breast cancer with women in bioidentical hormones is generally, some studies show a little bit of improvement, meaning less breast cancer. Other studies show a, you know, a little tiny bit more. Most studies show that there's no increased risk. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not really where the controversy is. I, I think that anyone who has done any amount of research or which is tough to, to stay up with the literature, they would be aware that estradiol is not a carcinogen, but an anti-inflammatory and a uh, actually a, um, a hero for women. Now, one of the books I like on this topic is a book by Avram Blooming. Good Jewish doctor. I only went to, I only love the Jewish doctors in medical school. And he's, a, he's an oncologist at my alma mater, and the book, Estrogen Matters, you can buy on Amazon. And he is very clear, having dealt with breast cancer for 40 decades before he just retired, that estrogen does not increase breast cancer. And the other oncologists that I talk with, um, um, there are a number of them that I work with, also say estrogen does not increase breast cancer. Now, I always monitor how estrogen is broken down how it's metabolized, and I give things like DIM and calcium deglucurate, and I give uh, kudzu in combinations that really help break down estrogen in a good way because the metabolites can be a little bit off with certain people. So I identify who maybe is not breaking down estrogen, you know, in the correct way, mm -hmm. and I correct it. Okay. 
You mentioned the bioidentical hormones. Ah. For somebody who never heard mm. about it, can you explain a little bit also the difference between the bioidentical hormones and the normal hormones? Yeah. So the normal hormones are Primarin or created to be like Primarin. And while Primarin does not increase breast cancer, you know, we're not horses and we're not pregnant horses. So there are 35 different ingredients in Primarin that is not exactly the same as our own hormones. And that study showed that there was increased heart disease, increased dementia, increased inflammation. So while there was not increased breast cancer, all those other things were not corrected because it's an inflammatory kind of hormone. So the bioidentical hormones that I've used for the last three and a half decades, those hormones are exactly the same biochemical, uh, anatomical, you know, hormones that all women make. So you can analyze it in any way you want, the DNA, the peptides, the, the any way you want, and it's exactly the same. Now, pharmaceutical companies are well aware of the fact that bioidentical hormones are healthier for women, and they have created something called the patch, the estradiol patch, which is bioidentical. They also created creams that are very weak, so I don't use the creams, but I do use the, bio, uh, the patches. Um, what I generally start using is using the FDA approved, so that means that you know the government has approved the bioidentical hormones that come from soy and yams, and they're put into cream bases, and then you use them as creams, and they absorb very well. They're exactly the same hormones that we make. And that's the entire difference, really. Mm -hmm. So they are synthesized in big pharmaceutical uh, uh, you know, companies, but they're made to be our own hormones. So this is one of the miracles of medicine. You know, we didn't have any of these. And women were treated with electroshock therapy. They were put in insane asylums. I'm talking about the 1930s, 1940s in the United States. They were the old TB, tuberculosis sanitariums, were empty so that put them away in the, the TB uh, sanitariums. So even Primarin was helpful in some ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the intent to help women was there. It just was a first attempt, and it wasn't uh, as successful as people had hoped. So you, you say also that the uh, imbalance, hormonal imbalance, uh, affects the personality, the ah. mood. Of no, course, yeah. yeah. So when women start to go into menopause, first of all, their brain gets foggy, and then they get depressed, and they get anxious, they get angry, they get irritable. So hormones affect the brain. They affect the, the bones, they affect the skin, they affect every single cell in the body. So when women come to me with depression, and feeling, you know, really down. The last thing I would think of at this point would be to put them on antidepressants. I'm like Sherlock Holmes. It's like, okay, let, let's look at the hormones. Let's see what hormone could be off. Could it be the thyroid hormone? If that's low, that causes depression. Is it testosterone? Is it estrogen? Is it the adrenal stress hormones? Is it D3, which is the sunshine hormone? Is it too much sugar? So menopause... When we analyze menopause, when I analyze menopause, I always look at all the major hormones. And I think that that's critical in terms of managing menopause. When I came out of my residency, and you know, it took me a few years to realize this, I wasn't doing that. And women got better on estrogen. They mm -hmm. got better on uh, progesterone. And then it's like, oh, women need testosterone. Oh my God, women need their thyroid balance. Oh my God, what about these adrenals? And within about... I would say five or six years, I put it together into we're all integrated, all the systems work together, just like an orchestra. You don't want an orchestra just with cellos, although I love the cello. <laughs> <laughs> you want all the instruments playing together. So um, someone who is uh, watching now the, the video and mm -hmm. uh, find herself with uh, some of the sim symptoms, mm -hmm. what she should do? I love that question. So this is a call to action because you can go down one path and say, oh, menopause will handle itself. 
or you can go down the other path where you're proactive, you're in charge of your health as much as we can be, and you make informed decisions based in science. And there are a lot of different kinds of science, the science of Ayurveda, the science of acupuncture and herbs, the Western science of bioidentical hormones, but based in science, and you make the decision uh, to, first of all, measure your hormone levels. And there are seven different hormones in my very small little, small little panel that I measure. You measure them here in Israel, and... Um, Basically, it's looking a little bit at the thyroid, a little bit at the adrenals, ovarian hormones, a little bit at the sugar, a little bit at the sunshine hormone. And your private doctor, your PMD, we call it in the United States, your, your doctor mm -hmm. or your gynecologist will order this for you. And I think we should put maybe on your site uh, the hormones that need to be order, uh, ordered just to, to help people a little bit. And you get a blood test, you show them to your gynecologist, and your gynecologist, I hope will know what to do. <laughs> there are some good people in Israel mm -hmm. who uh, really have started specializing in hormones. Mm -hmm. We're all a little slow to wake up. You know, in a lot of countries, for example, in Greece, because I take care of women all over the world with videos, and I'm always on video all day long. Um, and in Greece, there's, there's no estrogen. There's no progesterone whatsoever, none. Britain more advanced. In the last 10 years, I used to take care of so many British women, now less, uh, because there are doctors who do it. So um, you'll find the right doctors here in Israel if your doctor can't uh, or doesn't quite yet know uh, how the hormones work together. I wish endocrinologists did. Endocrinologists are not trained in the United States in female hormones. You know, they're good with adrenals. They're good with the thyroid. Mm -hmm. but has that been your uh, experience that doctors are available in Israel? Yeah, some of them are available for, for giving the test, yes. the right test, and also to give the bioidentical hormones. Very also good. Also a pharmacy who does them. Oh, yes. When we came uh, to Israel, when uh, Doron uh, Lipstein and I started our little clinic in Israel, I was training several doctors. And uh, we met with a compounding pharmacist. I gave them my formula for the hormones, which only has four ingredients in it. And, uh, you know, the doctor that I worked with widely prescribed bioidentical hormones. You know, during, during COVID, I wasn't able to come here for two years, so that training really stopped. But uh, there are some doctors that are, that are good with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On my book, I put a, a list of all the hormones that uh, have to Great. be checked. Yes. The thyroid. So I would say all of these, all of these, th this I'm not sure if they'll do. It's hard. They don't really like to do the free T3 yes. fear. But, you know, that's important. Cortisol, progesterone, estradiol. Um, you could maybe DHEA, testosterone. They don't really do human growth hormone here, but definitely mm -hmm. B12 sometimes, is great. Sometimes. Yeah. D3, PSA for a man. For a man. Yeah. And okay. then, uh, yeah, those are very, very good. I love okay. your list. <laughs> so, I like this book. Here we <laughs> Good book, guys. <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> Good book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, what about diabetes? How, how do you see it? Is it a hormonal disease? It's a lifestyle and hormonal disease. Now, um, the pancreas, which is right here in the body, uh, has two different parts to it. One is hormonal and creates insulin, and the other part is involved with digestion. So when we eat sugar, the pancreas, the beta cells of the, the, the islet cells, release insulin, which is like a taxi that takes the sugar to the cells, and it presents the sugar to the cells, and the insulin actually opens the door to the cell, so the sugar goes inside. And the more sugar you eat, the more insulin you make, and the first stage of diabetes, we call it pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, is where there's too much insulin because we're eating too much sugar. And th th what happens is that sugar is then pushed into the liver and the liver changes it into cholesterol and triglycerides and dumps it back into the bloodstream. So sugar is changed into cholesterol. 
So high triglycerides, high cholesterol is very frequently a beginning symptom of diabetes. So lifestyle, and it's not just sugar, as I know you say in your book, it's all the white things. Pasta, bread, crackers, um, uh, um, uh, rice, uh, I mean, it goes on and on. Mm-hmm. You know, any of the sweet things, all of that will raise your sugar. In fact, the best thing is a plant-based, healthy, a lot of a ro- lot of living food in the diet. You know, some protein, of course, mm-hmm. and spinach. I just learned. I didn't know this. I I thought I I thought plants only had ten percent uh, protein. I mean, that's what my research showed. But uh, her Rabbi Cousins said there's forty nine percent protein, oh, and he's really an expert in that field. Yeah, so I believe in protein in spinach. Okay, so. Um... What is the protocol the, when a woman is uh, um, taking mm-hmm. bioidentical hormonal, hormones? Yeah. How the day looks like? How her day looks like? How what do the she's women doing? Look? Yes. What uh, she's doing? What is the protocol? What she needs to do? Okay. So in what the she morning, does? Evening, oh, the morning, evening, the, the protocol takes a minute in the morning, a minute in the evening. So my protocol is I go click, click of my estradiol. I put it on my stomach, I go click at the testosterone, I put it right there. Um, I take uh, something that I created called Mega Adrenal, which has 25 milligrams of DHEA, 100 milligrams of pregnenolone, cortisol complex, which is a naturopathic uh, uh, complex. It's all in one pill. Mm -hmm. Uh, And a bunch of things like herbs, you know, to help the adrenals function better. I take one of those. I take my thyroid because I... I have three children, and that's a very common time that thyroid will become low and not recover. So I take my pill of the natural thyroid, which is T3, T4, and then I take a bunch of other stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do cellular energizers, some anti-inflammatories. I do some things to help the brain, and that's it, you know. I mean, just, just for the hormones, it takes me 30 seconds to do, and in the evening, I repeat my creams again, and I take progesterone. Now, I cycle progesterone with myself, meaning uh, 1 through 15 in the month on, the rest off, but you can also take it all month long. And uh, I love melatonin. You know, melatonin is such a beautiful hormone that is an (laughs) anti-inflammatory, an antioxidant. Oxidation is when you put a nail in the garden and it rusts. Well, same thing here. Our cells can rust. That's called oxidation. So melatonin, which is a hormone that is made during darkness in sleep, really decreases inflammation, decreases oxidation. It regulates women's menstrual cycles. So if women have abnormal or irregular periods, I always prescribe it. And it is anti-cancer in general and very potent anti-breast cancer. So... um, 15,000 blind women were just one of the studies they looked at. And those blind women had half of the incidence of breast cancer compared to all of us who have sight. So I prescribe any place from 5 to 20 milligrams of melatonin at night. And it helps with menopausal awakening. And it helps the brain to function better. Amazing. Yeah. So before we finish, what are uh, your best tips for a woman who wants to be energized, uh, feeling uh, <laughs> passion and vitality. Okay, what are your, your best tips? So the easy ones, which we don't always listen to, are diet and sleep. So those are very important. And we want to go to sleep, you know, round 10, 11 if we possibly push it. We want to sleep for eight or nine hours and take your melatonin at night. Right then and there, you're going to improve your health. Um, Eat a diet that I, I have this radiant eating plan that, that that's basically the functional medicine diet that I've tweaked a bit. And it has to do with good, healthy oils. And you're blessed here in Israel with olive oil. Uh, you also have avocado oil that you can do higher heat cooking with. And then you can put the, uh, the olive oil on your Israeli salads, which is living in live uh, food. Um, you limit the sugar. You limit all the white 
uh, carbohydrates. You eat a little more beans. You can eat uh, black rice, which is fine. You can eat quinoa, uh, you know, sweet potatoes. Those are the really good uh, carbohydrates to eat. So diet, sleep, balance your hormones to youthful levels. I mean, that has been my message for so many years. Balance your hormones to youthful levels. When they start to fall, correct it. Um, now, if you want to help the thyroid, which is very commonly low in women, you can take a little bit of iodine, and it's yod, right? Mm -hmm. Yod. Good. A little bit of yod. There's something called crow's lugols. Crows, C-R-O-W-S, lugols. And you take a few drops in water, drink it down, and three to four Brazil nuts, which has 200 micrograms of selenium. During the day, you take those wonderful nuts, because really, a handful of nuts is on the diet. It's very good for you, and lots of good oils and, and lots of good protein in nuts, too. So you have the four Brazil nuts. That's going to help your thyroid to work. Um, are you going to ask a question about thyroid? Uh, I would like to. Uh, let's ask a question <laughs> about thyroid. Because, okay. But those are just hints. Lifestyle, balance hormones, you know, increase the thyroid a little bit naturally. It's hard. It's hard to, to increase once the ovaries have, have declined. We really don't have a way to bring them back. Although my, my daughter is a naturopathic physician. She's in our, our center. And, um, you know, herbs can help very much. Acupuncture is beautiful. Energetic healing helps very much. Um, aro uh, not aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is very powerful, but uh, Ayurveda is good. So these are other things that you can do with practitioners without prescriptions. And I, I love using a lot of these herbs and methods. It's great. You are uh, mentioning uh, other methods to balance yes. the hormones in yes. the body. About thyroid, uh, we see lots of uh, hypothyroidism. Yes. And uh, I ask myself if it's the, the really the, the cause, is it the root cause or is it a symptom of other imbalance in the body? Well, I think when you look at hormones, it, especially the thyroid, it is both a root cause and a symptom. So as we age, the thyroid gland is very delicate, as you know. It becomes imbalanced easily. For example, after the birth of a child or during pregnancy, your baby takes all the iodine to make her own little thyroid gland right here in the neck is where the thyroid gland is. And then the mother can become hypothyroid. That means low thyroid. So when you think about, for example, postpartum depression, you have delivered your baby, but you're depressed. I always look at the thyroid and frequently find that that's one of the causes of depression. So, um, you know, the symptoms, do you want to go a little bit into the symptoms mm -hmm. in terms of how to know if you have low thyroid? So number one, you're gaining weight. Number two, you lose your hair or the hair becomes dry. You can lose the outer edge of your eyebrow. That's called the Hertog sign. And by the way, Thierry Hertog in Belgium is a brilliant endocrinologist. Okay. So you lose that outer edge of the eyebrow. Uh, you can get depressed and anxious. You can sleep more. So some people will tell me, oh, prudence, I sleep 12 hours. It's like, your adrenals are very low. You're probably in menopause, but also you probably have low thyroid because that's a too much of a symptom. Periods, menses are very heavy. So, for example, a 30-year-old will come in and say, Prudence, about a year ago, I'm bleeding for 10 days or 9 days, and I'm pouring out blood, and she's anemic. Indeed, her thyroid is low. And once we balance her thyroid with bioidentical thyroid, T3, T4, then her periods become normal again. Um, what other symptoms? I'm forgetting some body pain, mm -hmm. constipation, bloating. A cold in fever. Cold. Thank you. Cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you always feel cold. That was one of my symptoms. I was very, very cold. And everybody else is normal, but you're bundling up and you're wearing coats and jackets and all these things. Yeah. But do you, do you uh, find that thyroid always shows on blood work? Very good question. So 40% of the time, your doctor will tell you that your thyroid is normal. And I assure you, it is not. 40% of the time. So... What happens is that 
the lab values include a whole lot of people who have undiagnosed low thyroid. And so the reference range for thyroid includes about 40% of people who actually, the normal reference range, 40% of people who actually have low thyroid. The TSH, uh, according to some people, has no accuracy whatsoever. I always look at blood work, but I also look at 24-hour urine, and I use this test called the Meridian Valley, which is Jonathan Wright's a lab, to look at the thyroid. And when a woman will say, I know I have low thyroid, I say, I think you do too. It's just not being shown in the blood work. I use this thing called the Thyroflex, which is a reflex test made by uh, Dr. Turner, and that is extremely accurate in terms of diagnosing whether the blood work is correct and whether the symptoms are actually related to thyroid or to low adrenals or to menopause or low, low ovarian hormones or to some of the other hormones that we look at. Mm-hmm. So someone can say, I'm tired. Well, if you don't measure the hormones, you don't really know what is the cause of the fatigue. So in answer to that, absolutely, it is not an accurate test. In Europe, and Dr. T- Terry Hurtog is a world expert in, in thyroid for sure, uh, it's not, I consider the cutoff to be two. Anything above two, I'm starting to say, oh, you're, you're most likely you're hypothyroid, low mm-hmm. thyroid, uh, between one and two. But still, it's it's not still that accurate with mm-hmm. the blood work. Yes. Although the blood work is very good with the other hormones. I also do 24-hour urines on the adrenals and on estradiol, you know, the female hormones, to see what the metabolites are like. So there are many ways of testing. One of the best ways to test the adrenals, the cortisol, is with saliva. Mm-hmm. Very yes. accurate. We not so accurate right? with menopause, but very accurate with We have that. it also in Israel. Yeah. Um, okay, I think that's it. That's the whole. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, talking with me. Yeah. It's uh, fascinating, the information you We're are bringing. We're going to show your book again? Come on. My book, uh, uh, Hormonia. Me, like this? No, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Neanderthal, guys. Sorry, Soon, I'm trying to learn Hebrew. Soon we okay. will translate is, it to English yes, and to French. I'm very as well. proud of you. Thank I'm you so much. I'm that you are uh, pioneering women just like I am. I need lots of sisters to help. And this is a beautiful book. Uh, Also, my book was translated into Hebrew. It's called Radiant, Again and Forever. And uh, I gave it away at the big uh, talk at the arena. Mm -hmm. But maybe the one has a a book here. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prudence. Thank you you for being uh, our uh, light for women. Women and Israeli women are the light of the world. And my prayer for you, my greatest hope, is that you stay radiant, <laughs> full of light, just like you are. You're yeah. wonderful. Just Thank like you so you much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you for listening. Toda <laughs>